Hi, everybody. I'm John Tarilla, one of the authors of Topology, a Categorical Approach. In this video, I'm going to be talking about exponential topologies. Given two topological spaces, X and Y, you would like to promote the set of continuous functions from X to Y into a topological space. An exponential topology on the set of continuous functions from X to Y is a particularly nice kind of topology. In this video, I'll tell you what an exponential topology is, and I'll prove that when they exist, they're unique. For a little bit of context, consider the category of vector spaces over a fixed field K. Uh, the set of linear maps between from a vector space V to a vector space W isn't just a set. It has additional structure. You can add linear maps and multiply them by scalars, and it turns out that the set of linear maps from V to W is actually a vector space. We'd like to do something similar in the category of topological spaces. The question is, how should we do it? To put it another way, for a fixed topological space X, we have the representable functor that goes from the category of topological spaces to the category of sets that sends a space Y to the set of continuous functions from X to Y. And we'd like to promote that to a functor into the category of topological spaces. Again, the question is, how should we do it? Now, some candidate topologies for this set of maps from X to Y might have occurred to you already. Uh, you could think about the discrete topology or the product topology. Those choices turn out not to be the best choices for various reasons. And to motivate what I'm going to propose as a better choice, let's look at a, what may be a familiar adjunction in the category of sets where functions of two variables, say x cross z into y, correspond precisely to functions from z into the set of functions from x to y. This is something that's sometimes called currying, where you have a function of two variables, and by fixing one of the variables in the domain, what remains is a function of one variable. Now, if these sets are topological spaces, then I know what it means for a function g from x cross z into y to be continuous. And I'd like to put a topology on the space of continuous functions from x to y so that continuous functions from z into the space of continuous functions from x to y correspond bijectively to continuous functions from x cross z into y. And so I'm thinking of this bijection of sets as the desired property that I want, like some kind of an equation. And the topology on X, on the set of maps from X to Y, as the variable that I'm trying to solve for to make this equation true. So you can think of this bijection of sets as a property that any given topology on the set of continuous functions from X to Y may or may not satisfy. Expressed in terms of adjunctions, what we seek is a right adjoint for the functor from topological spaces to topological spaces defined by crossing with x. As such, you might think one approach to solving this problem of putting a topology on the set of continuous maps from x to y could be reduced to an adjoint functor theorem. And that's totally correct. That's the way certain really great topologists like Steenrod approach the problem. The difficulty is that you have to prove that crossing with x commutes with co-limits. And generally, that gets into some pretty hairy point set topology issues. For example, the product of quotient maps isn't a quotient map in general. Let's try and take a more straightforward approach. So let's fix topological spaces x, y, and z. And let's try and look at the desired property that we want a topology on the set of continuous functions from x to y to satisfy. Namely, we want continuous functions from z into that space to correspond to continuous functions from x cross z into y. Notice that this approach fits in nicely with a categorical perspective, since if we can determine what all the continuous maps in to top x, y are, it will determine top x, y up to isomorphism. And now we're just going to take a closer look at this desired pro property that a topology on top x, y may or may not have. 
to have this property, notice that we can't put too many open sets into it. Because if we start with a continuous function, say g from x cross z into y, in order for g hat, this adjunct of g, which is a function from z into top x, y to be continuous, that will be really difficult if top x, y has a lot of open sets. Say, if we put the discrete topology on top x, y, g hat will probably not be continuous. To put some terminology to the situation, let's call a topology on top x, y splitting. If it has the property that g hat will be continuous whenever g is continuous. On the other hand, we don't want to make it too easy for g hat to be continuous because we don't want g hat to correspond to non-continuous functions from x cross z into y. So in other words, for the continuity of g hat to imply the continuity of g, we don't want to make it too easy for functions from z into top x, y to be continuous. So we want to make sure that we have a topology on top x, y that's not too small. You can get the idea from an extreme example. If we put the indiscrete topology on top x, y, then every function from z into top x, y will be continuous. And you can create functions from z into top x, y that are continuous, but that do not assemble into a continuous function of two variables from z cross x into y. Here I've written an explicit example where x, y, and z are all the interval. But if you put the indiscrete topology on the set of continuous functions from 0, 1 into 0, 1, then you can do things like send rational numbers to one function, irrational numbers to another function that aren't very related to one another, and then you won't be able to assemble those into a continuous function of two variables. To put some terminology on the situation, let's call a topology on top x, y conjoining if the continuity of g hat implies the continuity of g. Now, let's call a topology on top x, y exponential if it's both splitting and conjoining. That is, an exponential topology is one for which we get this desired bijection between the continuous functions from x cross z into y and the continuous functions from z into top x, y. Now, the good news is, is that if an exponential topology exists, it must be unique. And the reason for this is very simple. It follows from the fact that every conjoining topology is comparable to and finer than every splitting topology. So if you have two exponential topologies, call them tau and tau prime. Since tau is splitting and tau prime is conjoining, tau is contained in tau prime. But on the other hand, since tau prime is splitting and tau is conjoining, tau prime is contained in tau. And you can see from these two statements that tau and tau prime must be the same. So now let me prove the fact that conjoining topologies are finer than splitting topologies. And I'll do it in two steps. First, I'll characterize the conjoining topologies on top x, y as those topologies for which the evaluation map is continuous. Before proving this fact, let me pause to say a little bit about the evaluation map. So when I say evaluation map, I mean the function that takes a pair, little x, and a function from x to y, and maps it to f of x, which is a point in y. This evaluation map is the co-unit of the adjunction we seek. And so we shouldn't be surprised that it plays a key role in this analysis. Now, one very useful fact to keep in mind is that the evaluation map as a map from a product into y corresponds to a map from the second factor into the space of maps from the first factor into y. In this case, that's a map from top x comma y to itself. And we see that, that if you trace through the definitions, the uh, adjunct of the evaluation map is just the identity. 
Now, keeping this useful fact uh, in mind and going back to the lemma makes one of the directions pretty clear. Namely, the identity map is continuous from top XY to top XY if you put any topology on it. If that topology is adjoining, then the corresponding map from two variables is continuous. Um, in this case, that's the evaluation map. Now, to prove the other direction, you assume that the evaluation map is continuous. You have a topo topology on top XY so that the evaluation map is continuous. Now you want to prove that that topology is conjoining. So you start with any function, not necessarily continuous, from X cross Z into Y, uh, that has the property that when you look at the adjunct G hat from Z into the space of maps from X to Y with the, this given topology, it is continuous. Well, if this map G hat is continuous, when you cross it with the identity on X, it will be continuous. And then when you compose it with the evaluation map, which is continuous by hypothesis, um, the result, the resulting composition will be continuous, but that resulting composition is precisely the function G. This proves that, that uh, the topology is conjoining. So the only thing left to explain to complete the argument that uh, exponential topologies are unique if they exist, is to show that conjoining topologies are finer than splitting topologies. So let's assume we have two topologies on top x, y, tau is splitting, say tau prime is conjoining. So tau prime being conjoining, we want to think of this as saying that the evaluation map from x cross top x, y with the topology tau prime it into y is continuous. So you think of top x, y with the, the conjoining topology tau prime as a space z, and you use the property that tau is splitting to show that the identity map from that space z, that is top x, y with the topology tau prime, uh, into top x, y with the topology tau is continuous. But what this means is that tau prime is finer than tau. So this completes the proof of what I called the good news. That is, if there exists an exponential topology on top x, y, then it's unique. And that concludes the main content for this video on exponential topologies. Now, you may have many questions about exponential topologies. For example, uh, you may want to know, what are the open sets? And for some nice spaces x, you could describe the open sets in top x, y, using something called the compact open topology. You may ask other questions like, when are sets of fu continuous functions compact? Well, under certain cases, for example, when y is a metric space and x is compact, there's a description of compact subsets of top x, y using uh, something that's called an analysis equicontinuity. And you might ask, for what kinds of spaces x and y does top x, y have an exponential topology? Uh, in general, there may be a gap between the largest conjoining topology and the smallest splitting topology. This brings us to the end of this video in which I talked about exponential topologies and tried to motivate them and proved that they were unique. Thanks for your attention.